it was reported, I think Jeff Passan, our very own, uh, reported that Nolan Arenado had come to an eight-year, $255 million agreement with the Colorado Rockies. I love signing A long-term deal one year before becoming a free agent. And the, the first thing I thought of, guys, was the absolute folly that it has been over the last couple of years. Like people, again, the teams never say it. it it's people in the media that are quoting sources, you know, they're chatty other GMs or, or scouts or things like that, or people quote unquote in the know. Well, the Yankees aren't going to go after Arenado. They're, they're not going to go after Manny Machado because they're waiting for Arenado to be a free agent. Really? Like, how could you be sure that Arenado is going to be a free agent? Well, he's not. Same thing I've heard over and over again about other players. Like the Phillies, you know, you know they're not going to go crazy on Harper and Machado because they want to save enough money for right. Mike Trout. Really? Mike Trout, in all likelihood, is going to sign this record-breaking deal with the Angels and never become a free agent. So right. all of these plans, you're trying to read people's minds, Don and Peter. These and minds can't be read, especially in, in this market now. And let's face it, every Met fan wants the Mets to give DeGrom a contract extension because they're afraid that the Yankees are going to sign him. Now, that's right. the fear. Everybody, the Yankees are going to sign everyone. Well, because they used to do that. And every agent kind of throws the Yankees' name out there because it gets more money for their client if there's a rumor that the biggest, baddest, richest team in town is, is interested in their client. But history has shown, or at least recent history, that the Yankees aren't necessarily interested in these deals. There's a foregone conclusion. Oh, Machado's coming here. Oh, Harper's coming here. Oh, oh all last year, Corbin was a Yankee. He was right. a Diamondback. But no, he's going to be a Yankee. It's done. You be, people were including him in their rotation for 2019. It was done. Well, guess what? The Yankees have a budget. They're not paying this outrageous money. Free agents are beginning to realize this now. So as much as they might want to play for the Yankees, if they're on a team that they're comfortable with and that team gives them money that's in the neighborhood, take it. Because the Yankees being there as this panacea, this glorified ATM machine, doesn't exist. It's a fallacy. And, and, and the bottom line is, in today's market, if you can get offered a contract without going into the minefield that is free agency, why wouldn't you do it? So, um, Aaron Hicks did it yesterday. Now, if he became a free agent and had a good year this year, would he have gotten more than seven years, 70 million? Yeah. But, you know, I, I was talking with somebody the other day, and, and they made this point. These players are changing the place of their employment and going places that they don't want to go to get money that they will never in their adult lives ever get to spend. It will not change their the way they live whatsoever. So if Manny Machado uh, had gone to Chicago uh, for the eight years, $250 million. He might have been happier than the 10 years, $300 million that the, uh, the, 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 the Padres gave him. Or if Manny Machado went to the Yankees and said, listen, give me a three-year, $105 million deal, maybe they bite and they give it to him, and he's happier. Again, the $300 million, I know, that's the way they keep score, but it doesn't change your well, life in the least no. because you're not going to be able to buy anything more than you could buy with the other money that you're getting. And I think that Bryce Harper right now is is in this 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 maelstrom of, of, of ideas with Scott Boris and stuff like that. He, he obviously doesn't want to go to Philly. He's trying any escape route out, and now he's considering going to the Dodgers, who are offering a much shorter contract. Now, now it's going to tell me something about Bryce Harper. Does he take a three or four year deal with the with the Dodgers and 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 risk being a free agent again at 30 and be where he wants to be? He wants to be with the Dodgers or the Yankees, or does he go to Philadelphia, where for some reason he doesn't want to be because they give him the most money? These are tough questions for players, but you know, Ola, Nolan Arenado. He made the decision. I'm happy in Colorado. Even if I become a free agent, got way more money, I'm still happy in Colorado, and it's money that I'm never going to see. Yeah, so why not just do it? Because doesn't that have value, being happy? Now, Machado gets the 10-year, $300 million contract, likely went to a place that, A, he's not happy with, and, B, is going to gouge him tax-wise, right? Yeah. And he may be the highest-paid player for five minutes because Harper may sign a deal for 325 in a couple of minutes with Philadelphia. Well, for a week, Don, he's no longer the highest average annual value. Right. Now that's Arenado. Right, exactly. So it lasted one week. And then that'll last one week when Harper signs, likely in Philadelphia if he's going to want to get the most money. And he won't be happy in a place that it's obvious he doesn't want to go to.
So as you said, when you're getting to that kind of stratosphere with money, I think happiness has to mean something. Now, there's a lot of people that are listening that the difference between $30,000 a year and $40,000 a year is life-changing. And sometimes you have to make sacrifices because that $10,000 is going to mean a lot to your family and your well-being. Or if it's $200,000 to $225,000. But when you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, Michael, you're taken care of. Your family's taken care of. Your family's family is taken care of. Generations are being taken care of. So why not go someplace and where you're happy? I think, and, and out of the mouths of babes, because that's what that's what Marco's first word was, happy. I mean, that that's a, that's a life lesson right there. A baby's first word well, is happy. Well, it should be your it. last word, too. Were you happy? Let's hear it. Happy. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> That's big. How about that? So, you brought up a great point this now, Don. Think about this. Manny Machado went to some place that I truly believe he doesn't want to be. Right. To be the highest paid player for less than a week. Mm -hmm. How stupid is that? But you, don't, you don't know that. Well, how do we know Manny Machado is so miserable in San Diego? You know, this well, is we, uh, again, you, you, you try to read tea leaves, Peter, and he said the, the thing he didn't like playing about the Dodgers, he doesn't like California. Maybe he meant L.A. L.A., San Diego, it's well, California. I mean, there's such a difference, but they are very, very different places. Just, just want everyone to know, this... I am completely miserable, San Diego. That's actually Ron Burgundy. That is not Manny well, Machado. We don't know that he feels that But way. according to Passon, that deal could have been on the table for 10 days. And he still shopped that deal around to see if anybody else was willing to give him the 10 years, $300 million. So it wasn't like he jumped that and said, oh, San Diego. I love San Diego. I love the money you're offering me. I'm in. He still shopped it to look for somebody else. The team is not close to winning. Matter of fact, this deal probably puts them in a tougher spot to improve the pitching that they're looking to improve. And it just reeks of when in three, four years, he'll get dealt with some high prospect that the Padres have so they can get out of that deal. It'll be Stanton all over again. It'll be Alex Rodriguez all over again. And, and Cano all over again. And, and clearly, just based on what's going on with all the reports, I don't know why, but Harper wants no part of Philly. But if he wants the big money and he signs with Philadelphia... You know, he'll say all the right things, but clearly Philadelphia is not a destination for him. And, and Peter, you, you bring up a fair point. We, don't, we haven't heard it from Machado's mouth that he's not happy in San Diego. But you do have to know the person, know the player, know what he's told other people in the past. Robinson Cano will never say anything bad about Seattle. The only reason he went there was to get the 10-year, $240 million deal. He, Seattle is so far away from everything that matters to Robinson Cano. They're probably thrilled that he ends up getting traded back to New York. But when you go places that you don't want to be, you're going to end up being miserable to try to get the last dime. That's what it comes down to. And I think that Harper, if he signs with the Phillies, is not going to essentially be happy. But the free agent game is an ego game. It's an ego game for the agents, which becomes very, very dangerous. Because right. Dan Lozano, and, uh, who's the agent for Machado, and, uh, and Scott Boris, the agent... Well, um, for Harper, they're, they're trying to put another notch on their belt, too. Now, there, there are ways it can change, Michael. I mean, when Keith Hernandez was traded to the Mets, he cried. Right. Cried his eyes out. So did Paul O'Neill to the Yankees. You know, Paul O'Neill to the Yankees. I remember when Scott Stevens went to the Devils. Cry, like They didn't want to be there. Then all of a sudden they win a championship, and now they're forever players for that organization. So maybe Machado turns the Padres around. Maybe we'll fast forward seven, eight years from now, and he'll love the city, and that'll be where he spends his retirement. I mean, there are po possibilities that it could be changed. It could be you could convince him to stay, and he'll like it. But right now, he made a decision solely based on money, Michael. And when you make a decision solely based on money, when you don't need money, it's usually a bad decision. Uh, I mean, again, I was talking to Reggie Jackson. We had an hour show uh, after the game was. Uh, uh, cancel I can't say postpone because they don't make up spring training games uh, and he said Machado's gonna be unhappy he said you can't put yourself up for auction and and expect to be happy because the, the highest bidder might not be the place where you want to go and I think that sage advice is I can see if it's a difference between making a hundred grand a year or a hundred million dollars a year that's a big difference but making 250 million or making Two, three hundred million, and and in California after taxes, it's not that big of a difference. I'm telling you, you 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 have to be happy where you're playing as well. And I think that Arenado proved that. I think there's more money out there for Arenado because he's such a highly respected player. But he took the money where he wanted to be, and and again, even if it's more money next year, 
It's not life-altering money. He could buy any car he wants. He could buy any house he wants. He could travel any place he wants in the world. The, the extra money would be nothing but ego-driven. So, you know, we started like this because we wanted to talk about the Arenado signing and about how the best laid plans. So any teams that were laying back and not improving their third base situation because they planned to sign Arenado, well, the joke's on you. He never became a free agent.